Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hey, Carrot Roosteros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another Corn School episode, and I have here with me Sarah Medlinger, who is a market development agronomist with Pride Seeds. How's it going today? Pretty good. How are you, Kara? I'm doing good. So we're standing in the middle of a cornfield. As you see, it's starting to get over Sarah's head. So we are uh, talking pollination and as well looking at silage quality. What, what can you tell me about that? Yeah, so it's been a tough year for corn growers and, you know, all, all, all the growers in the West. You know, some guys are living rain to rain. Some guys are just praying for the rain to come. So what we wanted to kind of touch on today was the impact of how drought can affect your silage quality and your silage yield, as well as talk a little bit about the smoke that's going on in a lot of Western Canada. Yeah, so what sort of, I mean, obviously there's not a ton of research on it, but when we're looking at this smoke, what does it have on the, what impacts does it have on the corn Yeah, so not a lot of research is kind of that timely thing. You can never really get consistent year to year research. Um, but we know smoke, we don't like to breathe it in. The corn doesn't like to breathe it in either. Um, so basically the smoke is blocking some of that solar radiation, that sunlight. And sunlight is critical for photosynthesis. We know carbon dioxide, water, plus light makes your, car makes your carbohydrates, which the plant uses to grow, develop, produce seed. So having less solar radiation means less photosynthesis. So that might delay um, our harvest a little bit. You know, it, we tend to see drier conditions with the smoke as well, and that can affect the stomata on the plant. So they close, then they're not doing anything, taking in that CO2. So, um, like I said, not a lot of research, but we can compare it to just like shade. Um, so really shady conditions, really cloudy conditions. We send, tend to see a little bit of a yield loss or CHUs aren't going to quite accumulate quite as quick. I'd say if we are trying to find the silver lining, we had some really, really hot days. So this wind is almost giving the crop a little bit of a break. It's not the break it necessarily wants, but I mean, if we're trying to find the silver lining, that's a positive on that front. Absolutely. And as we're kind of entering that flowering and silking time, it's it's a critical stage in the corn development. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, for sure. So I think we'll kind of focus a little bit more on drought on that side of things. So last week of July, early August is kind of when a lot of the corn salad, especially in Alberta, is doing the flowering reproducing thing. So um, with drought, we need to consider the timing that we're getting the drought and the duration. So if we had a lot, some drought um, symptoms early in the year and then we had some rain it's looking okay you might not see as much of the yield impact as you do if you still have some drought stress corn at your flowering and pollination timing um, flowering and pollination is where we get that kernel set we have that pollination and we know with silage that 50% of the yield will come from the ear development so if we have poor ear development you can probably bank on a little bit maybe a little bit less maybe a lot um, less yield if we're looking at pollination within the corn crop, do you want to kind of talk me through that process of looking at the tassels? For sure. So the first thing that's going to happen is the tassel is going to come out. That's going to be the end of the vegetative stage of growth. Um, once those come, the silks from the ear are going to come out and then the pollen is going to drop. Each potential kernel is going to shoot a silk out to the, to the tip of the ear through the husks. And then that's going to be when your pollination is happening. So if we have really wet conditions, you're not going to have great pollination. If you have really dry conditions, it's not going to be great for the pollination either. either. So we really are focusing on that pollination timing to maximizing yields. And as we're kind of looking, obviously yield is something we're paying attention to, but in a silage crop, we're also paying attention to quality. Yes, exactly. So as I mentioned, you know, if we have drought stress, we're not getting good ear development, we're probably not gonna have very much starch in the ear. That's really where that starch content comes from. However, if we're trying to find that silver lining, once again, there's been some research to show that there is more soluble sugars. If those soluble sugars are still in the, in the plant, in the stem, in the leaves, then when it gets to the bunker, it goes through that pickling process, that ensiling process, it can be converted to lactic acid. So you're still getting a bit of energy for that metabolism for the animal. And what about nitrates? Where, where do those fit into it all? So that's something you need to watch when you're cutting. Probably not going to be a something that you need to worry about if it's, if it's drought stress and hasn't rained. One I would raise a little bit of a red flag is if it rains, then you're thinking about cutting. Maybe wait three or four days just to let those nitrates settle back down uh, from the stalk of the corn. And I mean, a feed test is never a bad idea to look into. 
Um, so yeah. And obviously we're trying not to be too uh, negative here, but if, if parts of the prairies don't see that rain, what, when are we really gonna see that crop kind of shut down? Well, it can kind of depend and it can look, it tends to look a lot worse than it is. So, you know, for silage harvest, we're always looking at that approximate 65% moisture. So you might see some plants that look pretty brown and dried up. Double check your moisture before going in and silaging it because it can look wetter. And if you're not prepared to, to deal and manage that wetter silage and you have a lot of seepage or poor um, fermentation, then you're gonna have even more problems. <laughs>